And, and I also, I'm clear that there were people in my life um, that kept me. Yeah. There was a foundation. There was Anna and Leon Washington who raised me lovingly, mm -hmm. who were not prepared for this gay child. <laughs> <laughs> that was this virgin God bless queen our parents. <laughs> they, they just like, <laughs> what we gonna do? <laughs> There's no handbook for <laughs> There was, um, you know, when I came out to my father, uh, I didn't have the maturity, the insight, um, the perspective um, to see him as a man who loved his boy and was afraid because this was alien to him. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't prepared for it. Even if he saw it when I was six and he's slapping my hand because my mm -hmm. wrist is limp. Mm -hmm. He's not prepared for the reality of my, the adult, his yes. adult son saying, what you thought yes. is real. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do about it. Right. And um, I remember my mother telling me one time, it, when it was, it was during that, that time, so this is early 80s, I'm all, you know, I'm, I'm feeling my, I'm in the fullness yes. <laughs> of my self accepted queerness, <laughs> and Diana Ross is coming out when I'm coming out, I'm like, yes, <laughs> let's talk yes, a lot. Finally! The party, <laughs> I'm here, Diana's called me, I'm here. I With all the hair, Diana yes. was giving you so much. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, as a good friend of mine, um, Neil talked about walking up the ramp of the Paradise Garage. Which was an ascension. Oh. And I'm, you know, so, so much of this is happening mm -hmm. in my life. And so it's so exciting because I have escaped that terror of someone finding out. Escaped the terror. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I outlived it. And I, if I could face my father, who at that time, in my childhood, my teenage years, I loved him. I knew he loved me, but I was afraid of him. Mm -hmm. And he's, and his finding out, that one. <laughs> Was the one I, I feared most be, of, of being discovered, mm -hmm. um, being discovered by. Um, once I overcame that, um, I was so much, I was so, and when you talk about like looking at uh, or recognizing elders or mm -hmm. seeing myself, Johnny, I was so into just um, growing and, and accepting myself. Yes. Um, and having all those experiences. So, uh, it was during that time where I'm, I'm, I'm going out, I'm connecting with, with a uh, community. Mm -hmm. um, I had two people who were my guide, yes. my guides. Yeah, yeah. One was Derek, mm -hmm. uh, who was actually two years, exactly two years, we had the same birthday, and he's still here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he was 17 when I was 19, mm -hmm. and much more um, self-aware and confident and Derek didn't, his family didn't put him through the paces of acting like they believed that he was straight and so he didn't have to fall into, well, I'm gonna pretend that I right. am and pretend that I'm fooling you. Mm -hmm. Derek bypassed all that. Yeah. So he's much more advanced than me. Mm -hmm. But his aunt, who was another close friend of mine, Sandra, introduced me to him when I told Sandra that I was gay. Wow. So one of the gifts that Sandra gave me, in addition to her own love and guidance as a then 27 year old woman was to introduce me to her young nephew because there were certain things that she knew that she couldn't right. sh show me. Right, right, right. And so she gives me a peer, a wise and, and loving peer. Yes. And so that was my best friend. So Derek and I would hang out, and Derek brought me to the first clubs. Um, I would report back to Sandra as well. <laughs> Sandra wasn't hanging out with us, right. usually. <laughs> um, but were it not for those two people, there were other mm. people in my life and friends and my brother, um, who was, again, uh, yet yeah, another very protective big brother. But those two were, in a way, as close to gay parents as I have, and one was two years younger and one was seven years older. Because they were the ones whom I can trust with being my full self. Yes. And Derek, in particular, um, ushered me through the lingering, the vestiges of homophobia, internalized homophobia. And so any trace of closet that I was, the closetedness that I was still just demonstrating, mm -hmm. Derek would challenge it and challenge me with it. Woo! And so those early formative years, in addition to finding community in the close circle of those friends, um, 
my sisters Karen, Michelle, Simone, Claire in those early years, um, as well as of the community at large, um, were that was a supportive foundation. Yeah. When I am first infected, when I'm first showing those signs, when the epidemic hit, when the plague hits us, uh, that's what I had rested on. That's what I had to, to carry me through. Yes. And I was still terrified. Um, I remember, oh uh, wow, um, running into Colin Robinson and Craig Harris, two of the most courageous and uh, influential, um, pivotal black gay men. You talk about two individuals who were in the right place at the right time, who were divine to, to, to deliver what they did. Oh my goodness. Those are two. Um, Craig Craig uh, Harris uh, said the amazing phrase, got on stage, interrupted whole meeting, and said, I will be heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. One of the first, uh, one of the organizers of the first HIV conference yes. uh, for black folks yep. was Craig Harris. Uh, I knew Craig, uh, uh, you know, Craig was living in New York, and he was close with George Bellinger Jr. So I see those two. <laughs> Cutting up, they'd be in a cut at a party or whatever. <laughs> and they were organizing and they were these amazing activists that I just admired from a distance. Yes. Craig and Colin, another um, warrior, mm -hmm. uh, activist, artist, um, one of the founding members of other countries, mm -hmm. um, an amazing uh, uh, performance poet in his own right. They're at the corner in the village of all places. And I have these swollen lymph nodes, and we're talking, and I'm self-conscious I'm self about it. And at some point, I actually remember explaining to them that this was something else. So I wasn't, I was so, so I want to hold that up. Yes. Uh, I wasn't, it took me years to arrive at a place where I can fully accept and own and not be ashamed of my HIV infection. So to two definitive AIDS activists, whom I know as that, mm -hmm. as leaders, I'm hiding. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that, I think that represents the, you know, some of the, 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 the place that I was. 